Hi, my name is Ted O'Connell, and I'm the author of USMLE Step 2 Secrets. This is part two of the biostatistics chapter. Let's get started. What do you need to know about standard deviation for the USMLE? You need to know that with a normal or bell-shaped distribution, one standard deviation holds 68% of the values, two standard deviations hold 95% of the values, and three standard deviations hold 99.7% of the values. A classic question gives you the mean and standard deviations and asks you what percentage of values will be above a given value. For example, if the mean score on a test is 80 and the standard deviation is 5, 68% of the scores will be within 5 points of 80, scores of 75 to 85, and 95% of the scores will be within 10 points of 80, scores of 70 to 90. The question may ask what percentage of scores are over 90. The answer is 2.5% because 2.5% of the scores fall below 70 and 2.5% of the scores are over 80. Variations of this question are common. What five types of studies should you know for the USMLE Step 2 exam? From highest to lowest quality and desirability, one, experimental studies, two, prospective studies, three, retrospective studies, four, case series, five, prevalence surveys. What is an experimental study? Experimental studies are the gold standard. They compare two equal groups in which one variable is manipulated and its effect is measured. Experimental studies use double blinding, or at least single blinding, and well-matched controls to ensure accurate data. It is not always possible to do experimental studies because of ethical concerns. What are prospective studies? Why are they important? Prospective studies, also known as observational, longitudinal, cohort, incidence, or follow-up studies, involve choosing a sample, dividing it into two groups based on the presence or absence of a risk factor, and then following the groups over time to see what diseases they develop. For example, you can follow people with and without asymptomatic hypercholesterolemia to see if people with hypercholesterolemia have a higher incidence of myocardial infarction later in life. You can calculate relative risk and incidence from this type of study. Prospective studies are time-consuming and expensive, but are practical for common diseases. What are retrospective studies? Discuss their advantages and disadvantages. Retrospective, or case control studies, choose population samples after the fact, based on the presence of, or absence of disease. Information can be collected about risk factors. For example, you can compare people with lung cancer and people without lung cancer to see if people with lung cancer smoked more before they developed lung cancer. With a retrospective study, you can calculate an odds ratio, but you cannot calculate a true relative risk or measure incidence. Compared with prospective studies, retrospective studies are less expensive, less time consuming, and more practical for rare diseases. What is a case series study? How is it used? A case series study simply describes the clinical presentation of people with a certain disease. This type of study is good for extremely rare diseases, as are retrospective studies, and may suggest a need for a retrospective or prospective study. What is a prevalence survey? How is it used? Prevalence or cross-sectional surveys look at the prevalence of a disease and its risk factors. When used to compare two different cultures or populations, a prevalence survey may suggest a possible cause of a disease. The hypothesis can then be tested with a prospective study. For example, researchers have found a high prevalence of colon cancer and a diet high in fat in the United States versus a low prevalence of colon cancer and a diet low in fat in Japan. What is the difference between incidence and prevalence? Incidence is a number of new cases of a disease in a unit of time, generally one year, but any time frame can be used. The incidence of a disease is equal to the absolute or total risk of developing a condition, as distinguished from relative or attributable risk. Prevalence is a total number of cases of a disease, new or old, at a certain point in time. If a disease can only be treated to the point that people can be kept alive longer without being cured, what happens to the incidence and prevalence of the disease? 
This is the classic question about incidence and prevalence on the step two exam. Nothing happens to the incidence. The same number of people contract the disease every year, but the prevalence will increase because people with the disease live longer. In short-term diseases, such as influenza, the incidence, the incidence may be higher than the prevalence, whereas in chronic diseases, such as diabetes or hypertension, the prevalence is greater than the incidence. Define epidemic. In an epidemic, the observed incidence greatly exceeds the expects, expected incidence. When do you use a chi-squared test, t-test, or analysis of variance test? All of these tests are used to compare different sets of data. Chi-squared test compares percentages or proportions, non-numeric or nominal data. The t-test compares two means. The analysis of variance compares three or more means. What is the difference between nominal, ordinal, and continuous types of data? Nominal data have no numeric value. For example, the day of the week. Ordinal data give a ranking, but no quantification. For example, class rank, which does not specify how far number one is ahead of number two. Most numerical measurements are continuous data. For example, weight, blood pressure, or age. This distinction is important. Chi-squared test must be used to compare nominal or ordinal data, whereas a t-test or analysis of variance test is used to compare continuous data. Define p-value. The significance of the p-value is high yield on the step two exam. If p is less than 0.05 for a set of data, there is less than a 5% chance that the data were obtained by random error or chance. If p is less than 0.01, the chance is less than 1%. For example, if the blood pressure in a control group is 180 over 100 millimeters of mercury, but falls to 120 over 70 millimeters of mercury after drug X is given, a p-value less than 0.10 means that the chance that this difference was caused by random error or chance is less than 10%. It also means, however, that the chance that the result is random and unrelated to the drug may be as high as 9.99%. P less than 0.05 is generally used as a cutoff for statistical significance in the medical literature. What three points about p-value should be remembered for the Step 2 exam? One, a study with a p-value less than 0.05 may still have serious flaws. Two, a low p-value does not imply causation. And three, a study that has statistical significance does not necessarily have clinical significance. For example, if I tell you that drug X can lower blood pressure from 130 over 80 to 129 over 80 with a p of less than 0.0001, you will not use drug X because the result is not clinically important given the minimal blood pressure reduction, the cost, and probable side effects of the medication. Explain the relationship of the p-value to the null hypothesis. The p-value is also related to the null hypothesis, the hypothesis of no difference. For example, in a study of hypertension, the null hypothesis says that the drug under investigation does not work. Therefore, any difference in blood pressure is because of random error or chance. When the drug works beautifully and lowers blood pressure by 60 points, the null hypothesis must be rejected because clearly the drug works. When p is less than 0.05, I can confidently reject the null hypothesis because the p-value tells me that there is less than a 5% chance that the null hypothesis is correct. If the null hypothesis is wrong, the difference in blood pressure is not caused by chance. Therefore, it must be because of the drug. In other words, the p-value represents the chance of making a type 1 error, that is, claiming an effect or difference when none exists, or rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. If p is less than 0.07, there's less than 7% chance that you are making a type 1 error if you claim a true difference, not because of random error, in blood pressure be between the control and experimental groups. What is a type 2 error? In a type 2 error, the null hypothesis ex is accepted when in fact it is false. In the above example, it would mean that the antihypertensive drug works, but the experimenter says that it does not. 
What is the power of a study? How do you increase the power of a study? Power measures the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false, which is a good thing. The best way to increase power is to increase sample size. What are confounding variables? Confounding variables are unmeasured variables that affect both the independent, the manipulated or experimental variable, and the dependent or outcome variables. For example, an experimenter measures the number of ashtrays owned with the incidence of lung cancer and finds that people who have lung cancer have more ashtrays. He concludes that ashtrays cause lung cancer. Smoking tobacco is a confounding variable because it causes the increase in ashtrays and lung cancer.